Hey everybody, it's Kim with Lolly Doodle Studios, and we are coming here this afternoon to paint a little beginner's type field of clover. I hope that we're not getting too much of an echo with this camera. I think that we are. Hopefully it's not too bad that you can't hear me. Um, but anyway, I've got these little watercolor cards. Um, they're just an artist level watercolor pad by Artist Loft, four by six inches. If you don't have small pieces like this, just use regular watercolor paper, cut it down, or you can do this on a larger scale. Um, but I just want it to work small today. So I've got my sample here and I'll show you. It's very soft in the background. So we're going to be doing this in a lot of layers. So as you know, with watercolor, or if you don't know, we work from light to dark. So once you go dark, you can't really add light back on top unless you add in a different medium. So with this, we're going to start and do real soft in the background. We want this to look as if it were a field. We're looking at a field of clover, but we're only seeing a few. The rest are just blurred out into the background. So I've got a size four. I'm using a Princeton watercolor brush. And I've got an assortment of watercolor paints here in front of me. Some are Daniel Smith. Basically, the colors that you will need today are a phthalo blue or any other blue that you have. Use what you have. Phthalo blue, a nice cad yellow or a sunny yellow. We are also going to use some green. So use like a Kelly green, whatever green that you might have. Let's pull that down. Uh, and then I also have sap green. So I'll probably work a lot with the sap green and the blue with a little bit of yellow. And we'll mix those colors together to get different values of the same. So I'm just going to take some fresh water first. And... This is, I want to create the soft background look. So I'm going to take my brush full of water and I am just tapping big puddles of water right down onto my paper. I'm going to tilt that just slightly. That way I think you'll be able to see. They're just big puddles of water. I can make some really big. I can leave a bunch of them really small. Then basically what I'm going to do is let's see if I can I'll work right here. I'm gonna take some of my yellow and I'm just gonna put it here and add a good bit of water to it. I don't want this very strong at this point. So then I'm just gonna come over here and dab that where I've wet my paper. And I can take some of that and add a few more spots but i just want to let that blend out now i'm going to come over here in the corner and do the same with some sap green i'm just going to activate that watercolor add lots of water to it at this point i want this to be very transparent see-through so then i'm going to just come here and i'm going to tap some of that green See how I'm just dropping little splotches of the color onto my watercolor paper. Now, I'm also gonna grab some of my blue, my phthalo blue, and I'm gonna add it here with some of the green. So I'm gonna mix like a blue-green color. Lots of water. And you might have guessed it. We're going to drop this also onto our background. We're going to just flick some splotches. You can let this just watercolor, let it do what it does. Or you can use that brush to sort of blend that out by softly tapping it, moving it around. We're not really going for any shapes 
um, just yet. If you want a little more blue to that, feel free to grab some more blue, add a little bit more blue, but I just want this layer to be very soft. And if it gets too dark, you can soften it with some water or blot it off. Have like a piece of paper towel handy. You can always blot the excess back off. This is just our background. The very, very, very back shadows of where we just see a soft green of the field. And we're either going to let this dry or we're going to make it dry. So for the sake of time today, we're going to make this dry. So let me grab the heat tool and we're just going to dry this really quick. shoot for this to be pretty dry but if it's still um, a little bit damp here and there it's fine because we are going for a very loose watercolor um, effect so we don't want any extreme detail we don't want to stress this is beginner friendly it's very simple and easy so I want to demonstrate the little stroke that I'm going to do we're going to work small the things that are in the background are going to be the smallest the things that are closest to us that are going to be darker, these bigger clover, they will be bigger and they will be bolder with color. So you'll see everything else behind that, what looks like it falls off into the distance is blurred out and smaller, right? So we're looking at our scale there. Let me just grab a sip of my coffee. We need coffee on a Monday. All right, so I'm just wetting my brush, fresh water. I am going to come over into some of my yellow there. I'm going to grab some of this yellow, and I'm going to pull in. Actually, I'm going to pull in a little bit of green to that yellow. Okay, it's still pretty watered down. And basically, watch this stroke. Basically, what we're going to do so I know that I want a big one here, a big one here, and then maybe a third one right up here. So just keeping that in mind, and I want to put, you don't have to put as many as I put on the sample piece either. I'm going to drop this, and I want to imagine um, three and four petals around one specific spot. So I'm going to drop the brush right? The tip of the brush and press it down. I'm going to give it just a little wiggle, pull it in and lift it up. And I can come to the side of that and do that again. I'm making almost a heart shape, a sideways heart shape. Okay, we'll try that again. I'm going to do that again here. I'm going to press, tap and pull to a center point. Right next to that, I'm going to press that tip, press down, and pull it to a center point. And I'm going to do a third off to the side where it's like almost like a little heart, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And you can round some of them off. This is very see-through, but you'll see that it is stronger than the layer we put behind it. So I'm going to repeat that step maybe three times. I'll do one down here. So I'm doing a little dot pulled to a center point. Come right next to that and just do a little line. Pull that to the center point. So it's kind of like an upside down heart. And I'm going to do that two more times. I'm going to use the side of the brush. Pull it to that center point. I'm not going for perfect heart shapes, but almost like triangular. Think of a clover. Um, they're round. Some of them are well-rounded like a teardrop, and some of them have that bump in the center like a heart. So I'm just going to add some um, a little bit more color to that. 
And maybe I'll add just a really teeny tiny one way up here in the distance. Can move some of that color off if it's a little too dark. But you can just add a few of these throughout the page, right? So now we're gonna use that same color, our green here. And I'm gonna pull in some more of the sap green. So we're going a little bit darker with the color. Not extremely screaming dark, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna pull in some of that blue. I want some more of the blue. I'm gonna work with, I'm making a nice little teal, almost teal green blue color. Okay, so that is pretty strong. I'm gonna add some extra water. We're gonna repeat this now. So I can come, I'm gonna drop the brush down. It's almost perpendicular, so it's like laying down, not straight up and down. I'll do it this way. This is the paper, this is the brush. It's not straight up and down. I'm coming in almost touching the side or the belly of my brush to the paper. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that, say, right here. And I'm gonna wiggle it, make it a little bit bigger than the last pull it to a center point. I can make that a little bit more rounded. I'm gonna do another one here off to the side. See, I'm coming in sideways, pressing, and then I'm lifting, pulling it into the center. And I can just move that paint around a bit. Leave some white spaces in there. The white spaces just add highlight. Okay, so see how that is even a little a bit of a shade. Um, and a value darker than our last. Each layer is getting a little bit darker. Same strokes, pretty much. And I'm going to add some, you know, when you're looking straight at a clover, you'll see the three or the four leaves. But imagine one that's pointing off to the side. You might only see the side profile of one or two of the side leaves and maybe the third in the back. So I'm going to show you how I would do that. So this would be off to the side. Then I would do just one here and maybe one here, right? So it does not have to be three perfectly shaped rounded hearts. It's just wants to come and meet in that spot in the middle. So for one up here, I'm gonna just wiggle, pull it, wiggle, pull it. See so about three of them and they come right to like a center spot. I can just, I'm going to add a little bit of water, maybe water that down just a bit. I don't want to go crazy with this, right? You can add a few, sneak in one with four, sneak in one in the distance with four. You can add teeny tiny ones, just one, two, three little lines, three little tiny dots that meet in the center, right? You'll see how we're starting to build, okay? Um, some of this got a little bit bluer. You can always come in and add more blue. I'm going to come in with a little bit of blue on my brush. And I'm just going to tap one, maybe two, three dots in the center of some of these. And you'll see where... Where the paper is still wet, that color will start to travel. So that's going to add some depth in the center of those um, clover. So at this point, I'm either going to let this dry or make it dry. And because we are working with time here, you don't want to watch paint dry. And I don't blame you. We're going to go ahead and grab the heat tool and I'm going to make this dry. I want it to be pretty good and dry at this point, so I'm going to really take my time and make sure it's dry.
just want to see. Let me show you this. I'm very guilty of not taping down my watercolor. It's just not something that I typically do. Um, I want to show you a little trick that if you're ever painting like me and you like to pick your paper up and move it around, um, some people are really bothered by the fact that watercolor paper will curl up with the water. Here's a little tip that I've learned over the years that will help to fix that. So when you're finished and you are take a heat tool, make sure everything is completely dry. Heat that paper up really good. Heat both sides. Then when you're done and the paper is dry, take a nice heavy book, something with some substance to it, like my date book here. Set it on the paper and let it just sit there for a few minutes until it cools. And I'll show you what happens. Right, The heat is warming up the paper. It's softening the paper. It's more pliable, um, easier to bend. Okay, and then hopefully, hopefully I've given it enough time to cool. I've put the heavy book on top of it. Typically, I would walk away and leave it be for a little while. But then when I come back, oh, it's not quite done yet. But please trust me on this. Once it's completely cooled and the book will flatten the paper. may not be completely perfect, but trust me, it will flatten the watercolor paper. All right, so we are back at our painting. So now we're gonna go another value darker. I did one, two, three, four. I did five really close dark clover on the sample piece. I think on this one, I like that I'm working in threes. So three of the lighter, three, we did go four-ish with that mid color. So I'm gonna go back and do, I'm gonna do three. So let's see, I'm going to do one. We're going to do one right about here. We're going to do another one right about here and then a smaller one right up here. So we'll do one, two, three, one, two, three. We're going to work in threes. So we're going to use that puddle of green that I have here and I'm just going to come in with Whatever green that you have, I am using the sap green uh, by Daniel Smith, and I'm just going to mix that so it's nice and saturated with color. It has some of that blue in it from the clover that we just did, but I'm going to make sure I have enough, and there's enough paint there. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to do these can always add more sap green. If you like your clover a little bit more green, use less blue. I like the blue. If you like them more yellow, feel free to add more sunny yellow into them. Um, that's what the joy of art is. If you want them pink, make pink clover. Okay, so I'm going to come here and this one, these are going to be four leaf. So I'm going to take my saturated paintbrush and I'm going to do one two, three dots of color. Different than what we just did. I'm gonna then wet my brush, clean it off a little bit in the water, and I'm gonna come back in. My brush is wet, but not like soaking wet. I'm gonna do that sideways swipe. And as I press down, I'm gonna press pretty hard, pull up to the tip when I hit that middle dot. So. Place the brush down, pull in, lift up, and I'm going to hit that dot. See what happens. I'm going to then come over here, do it again, and hit the dot. So I'm doing sort of my heart shapes like we did here. You can use a bigger brush. Um, you can do the tip of the brush and just pull in, make your heart shapes. And if they're not dark enough, we come back in now and drop some more color. 
start light, you can always add more. It's harder to take away. I do want some white in between each of those four leaves of the clover. I'm going to drop, I can come in and get more saturated green. Just drop that in the center and let it do what, what it does. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to do one, two, three. I'll do four little dots. Clean my brush off a little bit, but you don't have to. And then I'm going to figure I want a clover leaf there. I want one here. I'm going to round that a little bit more. This one I'm going to bring out and over. You want you don't want them to be those perfect little circles. Um, I mean, if you do go, you can do that, but I do not. But you'll see how these are almost like the little hearts. Some are like little hearts that all meet in the center. There's a center point. Some are not. We can add more darker color, more saturated color. Pick up a different green. If you want, grab some of that beautiful blue. This is where you do how you see fit. I'm going to grab some dark blue and dab some of that in the center and let the color blend and do what it does. Watercolor is going to do what watercolor does. So I'm going to add one here. One. I'm just going to do a three, but I'm going to make it, we're going to make it sort of look like this. So we're going to use the tip of the brush. I'm going to start out here, pull in, start out here. I'm going to make this one long around and meet in the center. There's a lot of blue on this one, but I like it. I'm then going to do one here off to the side and come in. And we're going to do one coming up, meet in the middle here. See how they're just kind of like wonky looking. I want them wonky looking. I can come out here now and add some more of this blue. And I can darken these. But I kind of like them when they're really soft and just sort of blend out into the, the background. But if they're not standing out enough from the one behind it, just add a little bit more saturated watercolor to it. So that's what we're gonna do here and here. Okay. Can then take this and add a few little drops more like do some splatter with those deeper darker more vibrant colors if you like that that's all this the thing to splatter or not i love a good splatter on my watercolor then i'm going to take just the tip of my brush and i'm going to just come in very lightly and draw some stems I don't want them all going in the right the same direction I want some stems to look like they're going up behind you can always like use just water use the lighter paint if you want to come in and just make some more color spots you can make the hint just a hint of more clover like i feel like there should be something right here and we'll give him a stem a stem give that a stem okay i like it i like it so i'm gonna stop here we're gonna let it dry Oh, we're going to make it dry. We can completely stop here. You can initial your work, put it in a frame, send this to someone. There are tons of things you can do with it. 
on this one i did outline this with a black glaze pen by um the jelly roll glaze pen i like that illustrated look sometimes um to really make certain things pop out and stand out from the background but in order to do that you have to make sure that your watercolor is completely dry so i'm just going to make this dry again and that's when we get a sip of coffee Make sure it's good and dry. All right, so I think this is dry. And if you are worried about it hitting any leftover moisture in the paper, use an alcohol based pen like, um, oh, my brain. Um, hold on, micron, a micron, uh, but I like the wet look of the jelly roll once it's dry. So then I would just simply take my jelly roll or my gel pen or my marker. I'm going to hold it way at the top. I want it to be a little unstable. Okay. I want it to be a little unstable. I don't want perfectly circular lines. I don't, I'm not going to sit here. Real, this is loose. We want this to be loose. So I'm going to take my jelly roll and I'm going to hold it at the tip. And the three darkest here, I'm going to take my jelly roll and I am going to just see how loose this is and wonky. I don't want this to be perfect. I am just going to outline, let me show you how messy that looks. I love that look. If you like that look, that's how you do that look. So I'm going to repeat that on these two bigger, closer four leaf clovers. So I'm going in and around each leaf. And I'm going to go over them a couple times. I don't want my lines to be perfect. I can add a dot in the center. And we're just going to repeat that for this last one. Do you see how it does not have to be perfectly following the shape? And you really don't want it to be. Then you can do some black lines for those stems or not, um, but I'm going to. So we're gonna put that black stem there and we'll make it look like it's coming down out the bottom there. Okay, so that is how to paint a loose field of clover. We have some four leaf clovers in there I hope you enjoy this, guys. If you do, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more watercolor and brush lettering tutorials. Love art of all sorts. So be sure that you're following me here. Get both social with me on Facebook, TikTok, Pinterest, and all the things. Guys, I hope you have a wonderful evening, and I will see you next time.